kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcasts at a kids company about. We are so glad you're listening to this show, and I wanted to let you know that we've got an entire network of podcasts dedicated to producing original content that talks up to kids, centers the things going on in their world, and engages and challenges how they see the world and themselves. With shows about facts, climate justice, current events, and activism, there's a show out there made just for your kid. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Camp Adventure. Camp is in your living room. Camp is in your car on the way to the store. Camp is under your blanket port. Camp is everywhere. And Camp Adventure is for everyone, no matter where in the world you are. And Camp Counselors Ben and Hannah are ready to welcome you. It's week number seven at camp, and this week we're exploring creativity and boredom. I'm Camp Counselor Ari, and I'm so excited to be here at camp with you every week. It's a beautiful day at Camp Adventure. Let's say hello to our friend, Camp Counselor Ben, to kick things off. Thank you, my friend, Counselor Ari. Thank you. And yes, week seven of Camp Adventure has begun. Uh, And this week is going to include water snakes. (laughs) Yikes! And it's going to include building and creating. And I think one of the most important things that any kid from anywhere needs to learn to do which is learning how to build a fort, okay? Now, have you ever built a fort? Please raise your hands, both of them high in the air, wiggle your fingers around if you can, if you have ever made a fort in your bedroom, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> there we go. And now nod your head in slow motion up and down if you have ever built a fort in your living room or anywhere else inside your apartment or inside your house, or wherever you live, okay? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay, there I go. Now, I see some heads nodding slowly, and I see some hands up. Now, here's one more. How about outside? Have you ever built a fort outside? I mean, anywhere outside. Put your legs up in the air and wiggle your toes. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. There you go. Yes. Okay, so I see some of you have already built forts. You kind of know what I'm talking about. Now, one last thing. I want you to close your eyes and then fold your arms over your chest if you have ever in your lifetime been bored. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean. You're like me and all the other campers if you have ever been bored. I mean, like when everything in life just feels the same and everything's just kind of blah, boring. Not very fun, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well... My friends, when we get into the story time this week, I'm going to tell you a slithery story about water snakes, a story about being very bored until we discovered how a certain regular old boring old shrub could become a fort for big adventures. It's a story called the Snake Fort. But we're going to have to wait a little bit for story time because right now it is time for songs. Camp Adventure Songs. And if it's time for camp songs, you know that that means it's time to introduce our fearless music leader, Hannah. Now, I do not know if Hannah has ever built her own fort. I'd like to think she probably has. But you might need to write a letter to her and ask her. Maybe I should write a letter to Hannah. But I know this. I know that Hannah has been very creative before. In fact, I think that Hannah is always creative. Musicians like Hannah are usually pretty creative. Uh, Here's an example. Did you know that this very summer, Hannah walked into an average backyard here in Portland, Oregon? I mean, it was just a regular old yard, and it had a small little lawn, and it had a few boring average shrubs and an apple tree, 
and a few lawn chairs. And everybody thought it's just a regular backyard. But Hannah walked into it and she said, this is not a boring backyard at all. Let's, let's get creative here. Let's make this into a concert place. Let's have you musicians and we'll bring instruments and then we'll invite people from all over the neighborhood. And then we'll put up beautiful lights and fiery torches. And then she invited other musicians and lots of people. And guess what happened? She turned a boring old backyard into a beautiful night full of creative music for the whole neighborhood. It was like a gift. She turned a regular old backyard lawn into a magical place filled with artistic sounds. <laughs> it was very cool. Believe me. Well, that is our Hannah, my friends, the great and knowledgeable, the one and the only, the musician who turns backyards into magical wonderlands for all of her neighbors to enjoy, my good friend, Hannah Glaver. Thanks, Ben. Fun fact, I am an expert fort builder, both indoor and outdoor. I just love creating spaces that I can share with my friends, just like that backyard concert underneath the apple tree. I remember when I was little, I used to pretend my living room was a movie theater, and I'd drop pretend tickets, and I'd pop popcorn, and I'd invite my entire family to a night at the movies, right in our own home. I just love being a creative, but it's not just musicians like me or a person who paints or a builder who builds who are creative. The truth is that everyone has what it takes. It's how we are made. Every one of us is made to think creatively, dreaming and making and doing awesome things. And what's more, when we gather creative people together, we learn from each other and discover something new. Wait, is that how the song goes? I don't remember. Do you ever sit and wish that you could just do something new? Like when the grass is always greener or the sky is the same blue. If we use a little wonder, we just might have a breakthrough. When we're creating as creatives, you can grow in your point of view. All right, here comes the part we know and love. Adventure, we venture together with courage. We learn and grow strong. We learn from each other. So let's discover and uncover great adventures, bright and new. You guys, that sounds so good. I'm so proud of you, my creative campers, and I'm thankful for you. We are making music together, and we're making it all over the place, and I can't wait to do it with you again next week. But for now, we need to check out our Camp Adventure mailbag, and I can't wait to see and hear all about the creations that you campers are making. Your camp flags, and your letters, and your video clips that you're posting. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. It's time for Mailbag. Hi, everyone. I'm Camp Counselor Matthew, and I'm here with the Mailbag. It's where I keep all the mail we receive from our campers. Let me just unzip the bag here, and let's see what's inside. Oh, my goodness. We have got mail from two amazing campers. Pablo is from Camp Cute Reefs, and wow, that camp flag is amazing. I would travel to your underwater camp in a heartbeat, Pablo. We've also got a flag from Alejandro at Camp Iron Golem, which reminds me a lot of Minecraft with that very cool design. It also makes me think of one of my favorite animated movies, Castle in the Sky. Anyway, Pablo sent in some videos of a raft made from the weekly challenge from episode two. And this raft is awesome. Pablo named his creation the Craft Raft. And I spot a Lego minifig floating on the raft deck. Is that right, Pablo? Guess what? That raft stayed together and stayed afloat. Much different from the fate of Camp Counselor Ben and his friend from that raft story he shared that week. Big high fives to Pablo and Alejandro for sharing. We'd love to know about your camp experiences. So to all of our camp adventure campers and families and friends, 
Send us your photos and your videos and mail to listen at a kid's podcast about dot com. Or you can use social media using hashtag AKBA summer. We'll share as many things as we can from our mailbag each week. That's listen at a kid's podcast about dot com or on social media using hashtag AKBA summer. That's it. Have a great day at camp. Hi, campers. It's Camp Counselor Emma here. When I'm not helping to run camp, I get to edit books for kids like you, which I love. The way I see the world is shaped by words. I have always loved reading, and it's had a big impact on how I think about the language we use. I want you to close your eyes and think about how you feel when you hear these words. It's so nice to see you. Do you want to go get ice cream this afternoon? Let's build a giant fort out of blankets and pillows and watch our favorite movies this afternoon. I love you. How did that make you feel? When I hear words like that, I feel excited, happy, and safe. What are some of your favorite words? Take a moment and think about it. Like I mentioned before, I love to read which is why I am so excited to have you all join me for a Camp Adventure poetry segment this summer. I'm going to share a few different poems throughout our time at camp together that paint beautiful word pictures in my mind, and some are even kind of funny. The one I'm going to share today is by one of my favorite authors named Jacqueline Woodson. I thought this poem was perfect for camp because it's called Firefly. Before we listen, I want you to get real comfy and then close your eyes. Focus on the words and the pictures they create. Okay, are we ready? Deep breath in. And deep breath out. Firefly by Jacqueline Woodson. It's almost May, and yesterday I saw a firefly. You don't see them a lot in the city. Sometimes, in the park, in the near dark, one comes out. You'll hear a little kid shout, lightning bug, firefly. It's almost May and yesterday, I caught a firefly in my hand. First firefly I seen in a long, long time. Make a wish, Miss Edna said, make a good one. Firefly wishes always come true. Wow, what did you guys think? Have you spent a summer evening catching fireflies before? Or even if you haven't, Could you imagine what that might be like? Thanks so much for joining me for today's poetry segment. I can't wait to share with you all next time. Hey campers, it's Camp Counselor Denise here. Are you enjoying your time at Camp Adventure so far? You know, I think the best thing about Camp Adventure is that you can go to camp no matter where you are in the world. You see, I'm actually from a tiny little island in the Caribbean called Puerto Rico. Have you ever heard of it? It's a beautiful place that is sometimes called La Isla del Encanto, which means the Island of Enchantment. Living in a place with a name like that, you can only imagine the kinds of adventures I had growing up. There are a lot of great things about living in Puerto Rico that I love. I could go on forever, but one of the coolest things is that I actually grew up speaking and hearing Spanish all around me, like a lot of you. Speaking Spanish always makes me think of home and all the wonderful memories I have growing up there. And like, it's not so far away, no matter where I am in the world. So I thought it might be fun for all of us here at camp to speak Spanish together. What do you say? All right then. I think the best place to start is with my favorite word in any language, chocolate. If you've been listening since the very beginning, you know that chocolate is a pretty big deal here at Camp Adventure. Chocolate in Spanish is, drum roll please, chocolate. Easy, right? Chocolate rolls right off the tongue. Now let's say it all together. Ready? Chocolate. Yes! Great job, everyone! I love chocolate. All the best camp treats are made of chocolate. Chocolate caliente, crepas, s'mores. Though, I've never actually had s'mores, but I hear they're great. You know, one of my favorite things about chocolate, other than how delicious it is, is that it's actually spelled the same in English and Spanish. 
I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool. All right, that's all we have time for today, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Keep practicing, and I'll be back with more fun words soon. Nos vemos pronto. All right, campers, after this break, we're going to hear a story from Camp Counselor Ben, and I promise you won't want to miss it. Here at A Kid's Company About, we make podcasts, but also books, classes, and even more for kids and families just like yours. We've got a couple new and upcoming books in our Little Book About Board Book series, embracing Tumblrhood's most essential topics. Here's one of our authors sharing a sneak peek. Hi, my name is Andrea Campos, and I'm the co-author and illustrator of A Little Book About Culture, a new book in the series all about the different ways culture shows up in our day-to-day -day lives. Learn more about A Little Book About Culture by visiting akidsco.com. There are a lot of facts we learn every day. Did you know that pigeons are the only bird to feed their chicks milk? Did you know that potatoes can grow on Mars? And did you know uh, a monarch butterfly is poisonous? And did you know a snail has more than a thousand teeth? And did you know a dragonfly actually eats? Like, you know, the flies, if you hate them, they're just flying around and you hate them. They'll just actually eat them. They eat little bugs. Dragonflies eat little bugs? Yeah. Nice. But those facts lead us to a much bigger question. How do we know what we think is true is actually true? Hi, friends. I'm Ariane Nettles. I'm a journalist, a college professor, and host of Is That True? It's a kid's podcast about facts. Each week, we go on a fact-checking investigation with experts and enthusiasts because when you have evidence to support your knowledge, what you know becomes even stronger. Even cooler, you are a key part of this show. We need you to make it happen. We need your facts. Maybe it's something you know about science or sports, animals or world records, history or space. There's no limit to what we can learn about. New episodes of Is That True? release every Wednesday wherever podcasts are found. This is Ariane, and I can't wait to investigate with you. Okay, we're back and it's story time. Are you excited? Me too. So let's get ready for this week's story. Let's try some stretches. Reach one of your arms over your head just to one side like you're going to give someone a big wave with your whole body. Now the other arm. Ooh, that felt so good. Now let's get cozy. In just a sec, let's hit pause to get in this week's perfect listening spot. Three, two, one, go. Where do you pick? This week, I'm listening all snuggled up on my couch with some tea. Wherever you go, get comfy. Are you ready, Counselor Ben? Ari, thank you. And yes, the time for stories has come. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I always love this time. And I just have to warn everybody up front, this week's story is going to be a little bit boring at first, but hang on, because after it's boring, it'll get very slithery. And then after it gets slithery, the story will get creative and exciting. So I think we should begin. How do you think? Yes? All right. I think so. Let's begin. So here it is. Our story begins back when I was eight years old, back in Burlington, Wisconsin, in the same little gray house that I have told a few stories about so far. Now, remember the rafting adventure from week number two? If you haven't heard that one, no worries, no problem. You can always go back and listen to week number two, the story of the raft. 
But if you remember, my little gray house was right across the street, West Chestnut Street, right across from the Fox River. And my sister Christy and I played in our backyard all the time, all summer long. In fact, we played out there so much that it actually kind of started to get boring. I mean, we already knew everything in the backyard. It was the same old lawn, just flat, regular grass. Same old sandbox. You know, we liked our sandbox, but after a while, it was just kind of boring. You know, same old trees in the yard. We love to climb trees, but after you've climbed the same tree a hundred times, it just kind of gets old. So we were doing what most kids do when they are bored. What do you do when you're bored? Huh. Yeah, you know what that is? I think we did what most kids do, which is we complained. Maybe not all kids do this. But when we got bored, we started complaining and whining about being bored. Man, there is nothing to do, we said. And we had our hands folded over our chest. We said, and frowns on our faces. And we said, this is so lame. But then whenever we started getting bored and complaining about it, my mom would give us extra chores to do. She would say, well, if you're so bored then you can do more work around the house. <laughs> so we were bored. However, we did not want to have a bunch of extra chores to do. So we decided let's not complain. But what should we do instead? Well, we did the only kind of thing that a kid can do when they are bored. We got creative like Hannah. Let's go down to the river and see if we can catch any water snakes. Christy said that seemed reasonable. Along the side of the river, there were big flat stones that soaked in the warm sunshine. And when it was the hot outside on the rocks, they warmed up. And guess what loves to sit on warm stones? Uh -huh. Reptiles. And snakes are reptiles. And these snakes came up from the Fox River. So we got a big gray bucket and we started catching water snakes. Okay, now, campers. Uh, it, this is not a good thing for you to do unless you get permission from your grown-ups because some parts of the United States have poisonous snakes. I told you when I lived in Tennessee, there were copperheads and water moccasins, and both of those snakes were very poisonous, so we did not catch those. But Christy and I here in Wisconsin, there were no poisonous snakes around, so it was totally safe. So please don't hear me saying we caught snakes and then think I should go catch them too. You can, but first talk to your grown-ups and make sure that you live in a place where you're not catching poisonous snakes because nobody wants to get bit by a poisonous snake. <laughs> well, these little snakes, they were grayish and black. And if you snuck up on them very slowly, and if you moved your hand very carefully, you could grab the snakes right behind their head. And of course we grabbed them gently and then you could pick them up and you could check them out. We didn't hurt them at all. So all afternoon we would sneak along the rocks and catch these little water snakes and put them in our gray bucket until we had 10 snakes. Now, imagine looking down into a bucket and seeing 10 snakes all slithering around. It was kind of freaky, but it was also cool. Then we took them into our backyard and we drew a line in the yard, you know, with our foot or something simple like that. And then we dumped them all out at the same time. And then all of the snakes slithered through the grass. And then some of them started to slither and slide right over West Chestnut Street. We blocked the cars and told them, you know, we stepped out in the road and made sure they didn't get run over by the cars. And they slithered back down to the Fox River. It was a snake race. And Christie's snakes won the race. Well, most of them were the first to get back to the water, except for one snake that slithered over into a huge cedar bush. And then, as it slithered over there, it disappeared under the bush. So Christie went into the bush after it. She got down on her hands and knees, and she crawled along, and she lifted up a branch, and then... Whoosh, she disappeared into the bush. It was like the bush had swallowed her up. Hey, hey, I yelled to her. Where did you go? And then a voice came from inside the bush. Ben, come in here. It's so cool. And when we went in there, 
we found other water snakes right there inside the bush hanging out on the edge of the river. This bush was right on the edge of the river. So there we were, and it was the coolest space. There were little branches that came up over our heads and made a sort of roof, and then big branches around the edges that made perfect walls. And I said, let's turn this into a fort. Now we were starting to get creative. We hurried back and we picked up a small saw and then a hedge clippers from my mom's shed for clipping branches. And then back inside the big cedar bush, we trimmed away the dead branches. And then we trimmed away the prickly branches. Those were the ones that were always scratching our faces and getting in our hair. And then pretty soon, inside that big secret bush, we had a fort and it had space. It was spacious. Then we went into the garage and we found two little lawn chairs. And then we made a little table out of a stump behind the shed. And then we got some adventure snacks. Now, you cannot have a good adventure without good adventure snacks, which I have been telling you all through summer camp this year. <laughs> and then we whittled spears because we figured we better have spears in case monsters come. And then we got flashlights. And then, now this is very important, we dug a hole in the edge of our fort. And we put a wooden box in the hole and that was our treasure chest. Every single fort, in my opinion, this might not be true for everybody, but for me, you've got to have a secret treasure stash. Well, we collected our paper tubes and we made lookout binoculars. And then after a few days of working on our fort, we were absolutely not bored at all. <laughs> it was so much fun. And this old cedar bush... I mean, it was just nothing special. It's just an average, boring old bush. But once we got into the middle of it and carved out the prickly branches, it was spacious. We had chairs. We had a little table. It was not boring at all. With a little bit of creativity, it became our fort. It was like our own little camp cabin, just the way we liked it. And then we had to name the fort, because every good fort needs a good name. And we argued for a little while, fighting back and forth about what to call it. And then Christy said, I know, I know. Let's call it the Snake Fort, because this is where we catch water snakes. And she was totally right. The Snake Fort was the perfect name. And then we had to make a camp flag for our fort. So we got our best paper and our crayons and some colored pencils, and we made a picture of a blackish-gray snake, and we wrote Snake Fort over the top. And then we hung our flag up, and I think at that point, our fort was complete. And guess what? We kept working on that fort all summer long. We got a little brass bell when you hang it up, ding, 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 and then we put it right by the door. So if you wanted to come into the fort, you had to ring the bell, and then you had to say a secret code word. Oh, it's so fun to come up with good code words. We said a code word before you could enter, and our code word was slithery serpents. If you didn't know that word, you would not be allowed into the fort. Then we had imaginary adventures in that fort all summer long, and we hardly ever got bored. I mean, it was like there was always something cool to do, as long as we remembered to be creative. And guess what else? I'm older now. You know, I'm much older, as you know. But two years ago, I took my kids, Wesley, he's nine years old, and Annabelle, she's 11, and I took them back to Wisconsin to see that old gray house on West Chestnut Street, and right there, still on the riverbank of the Fox River, was that same old cedar bush, and it was still growing. And I got to show my kids the old snake fort. Our chairs and table were gone, but the fort was still there. And we wondered, which kids will be the next adventurers who find this old, boring, regular bush and with creativity turn it into something awesome, something adventurous? I wonder what kinds of bushes that you have around your world. Uh, maybe a good tree that you could use for a fort. I bet that if you get creative... You can also avoid being bored and make yourself a very cool fort. Sometimes a stack of blankets can turn into a great fort. Or umbrellas, did you know that? I'll tell you more about that later. 
And I'll have more to say about all of this in a second, because I think at this point, it is time for our weekly challenge. (laughs) And can you guess what we're going to do this week? Mm -hmm. I bet you can. So hang on, campers of Camp Adventure. I will be right back with our weekly challenge. All right, Camp Adventure, it is time for the weekly challenge. This is the seventh challenge, which means that this could be a lucky challenge. You know, number seven. Sometimes they say the number seven is lucky, you know. Well, this week's challenge is simple. Last week's was pretty simple, too, making s'mores. If you haven't listened to week number six, please do, because it's all about fiery marshmallows and making s'mores. This week, though, you'll have to be just as creative, maybe even more creative, because you're going to have to look around at some of the things at your house or your apartment or your garage or your yard, maybe down at the park, You have to look at those things that maybe you've seen a bunch of times and they kind of seem average or boring, and then you'll have to turn it into something new, okay? For example, how many of you think that a blanket is super duper exciting? Uh, Raise your hand if you think a blanket is exciting. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Well, okay, I see a few hands going up, but most of us do not think that blankets are that cool. Most often... They're just blankets. But I tell you what, if you drape those blankets just right over the back of your couch and then some chairs or over some things in your bedroom, you can make a killer blanket fort. So cool. I know for sure that some of you already have. In fact, some campers have already made forts for their camp cabins. I know this has been happening. I've seen the pictures. Please, if you have pictures, send them in. And they've already hung up their camp flags on the fort. It's so cool. So look around inside your house for sheets or blankets that you could use to create a fort. Maybe, remember, you can make it however you want. So maybe go outside and look for something else you could make a fort out of. How about umbrellas? I have literally seen kids take three or four regular old boring umbrellas and they open them up and then you set them together just right, and you can make a little dome-shaped fort to hide outside in. It's very cool. You can make forts out of old scrap wood, if you have some of that laying around, or out of branches and leaves. My daughter, Annabelle, she once gathered tons of sticks around the playground at our city park, and she built a really cool fort right there in the park in the afternoon. It looked kind of like Eeyore's house on Winnie the Pooh, you know, his, his triangle fort made out of sticks. Yeah, it was just like that. Well, you can build forts in closets and in basements and in bedrooms and pretty much anywhere that you are. And that, my friends, is the challenge this week. Get out and build your own fort or stay inside and build your own fort. And don't forget to create a name for your fort at the end, kind of like we named ours the Snake Fort. And then make a flag for your fort. And if you've already made a flag from week one, just use that flag. It's just as good. It's like putting the cherry on top of an ice cream sundae. It really finishes up the project nicely. And of course, please do send me some pictures. We'll open them up and check them out during our mailbag time. Sound okay? It sounds good to me. And I can't wait to see what you build. What you make and what you invent, I cannot wait to see your creativity. And as usual... I can't wait to see you next week. So have fun, no hurry, no worry. Just have a good camp adventure time. And here is Ari one more time to remind you how to send in your pictures and stories and video clips. Ari, take it away. Thanks, Ben. And thank you campers for joining us at Camp Adventure this week. We'd love to feature you and your fellow campers on our next episode. Share your camp space and all your weekly camp challenge creations on social media using hashtag AKBA Summer or write to us at listen at a kids podcast about.com. Camp Adventure is written by Benter Team with help from the a Kids Podcast About Team. Original music is by Hannah Glaver. Check out Hannah's albums at hannahglaver.bandcamp.com. This show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner with help from me, Ari Mathay. Audio production is by Chad Michael Snavely and the team at Sound On Studios. 
Our executive producer is Jelani Memory, and this show was brought to you by Kids Podcast About. Listen to other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting a kidsbookabout.com. While you're there, be sure to check out Ben's book, A Kid's Book About Adventure. See you back at Camp Adventure next week. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Oh, oh, oh.